Hi everyone, welcome to Nitrania Game Club. My name is Branislav Beretz and you're watching Game in a Nutshell, a series of videos designed to teach how to play various board games. Today we'll learn how to play New Frontiers from the Race for the Galaxy family. Now, if you're familiar with other Race for the Galaxy games, the new game will not be that different for you. However, New Frontiers is a completely new game Play slightly differently, so let's take a look. First, place the small and large development tiles in their indicated spaces. For a two-player game, place only one tile. For a three- and a four-player game, place two tiles. And for a five-player game, place all three tiles onto the game mat. You can use this small setup player 8 tile as a reference. These 8 small development tiles will always be in play. All other tiles, either small ones or the large tiles, are double sided. Choose any method you want to decide which side you will use for the game. For the first game, the game authors recommend to use the sides printed on the game mats. Then prepare these action tiles. The order in which you set them up is not important, but make sure the retreat into isolation tile is face up when you don't use the goals. If you use the goals, use the other side of this action tile. Then make sure there is a space below these action tiles, because you will have to slide them down during the gameplay. Then create the general supply of colonists and victory points. As indicated by the setup player 8, you need 12 colonists per player and 12 victory points per player. To create the pool of victory point chips, it's better to use some smaller denominations. Then take all the world tiles, shuffle them thoroughly and put them into the bag. Then each player has to choose the color and then randomly determine the starting player order. Place the discs in that order and keep the first spot empty. In a two-player game, when you randomly determine the player order, place the second discs in the same order. Then each player randomly chooses the Empire mat. Then choose which home colony you will use, either this one or the one printed on the other side of the mat. Again, for the first game, game authors recommend to use the side that has this number in the white square. If you play three, four or five-player game, you can place your second disc on your empire mat to mark the color of your empire. Then, as indicated on this colonist supply tile, take one colonist from the general supply and place him on this pre-printed colonist space on your home colony. Then, if your home colony has a halo around the number, place a good token of the corresponding color on your home colony. For a comparison, this kind of world doesn't have a halo, so there would be no good token on this world. Each player starts the game with three credits. As indicated on the setup player 8, in a two and three player game, the last player starts the game with one more credit. In four or five player games, last two players start the game with one more credit. Place your starting credits on your empire mat, and with this the setup is complete and we can start the game. The game of New Frontiers is played in rounds and each round has several turns. With three players each round will have three turns. At the start of the first turn, first player chooses one of the action tiles, whichever he wants, and slides that action tile down. In addition, he slides his disc halfway towards the first spot. Then each player in this player order, starting with the player who chose the action tile, will perform selected action. The player who selected the action, so in this case purple player, will get the bonus of that action. So the first player, the purple player, placed a development tile with the bonus of that action. Then the second player took the action, now without the bonus. And then the third player will also take that action. At the end of the turn, slide the disc fully towards the first spot. Then, for the second turn, second player slides his disc halfway towards the second spot 
and he needs to select an action but the different from the ones already selected. He would slide selected action down, so the green player starts the turn. After the green player, the yellow player takes an action, and after the yellow player completed his action, the player order comes back now to the purple player, who does his action. Now, for the third turn, yellow player has to slide his disc towards the third spot, and he needs to select an action different from those two selected before. He would slide that action down, and because he selected the action, he is the first one to act. He would perform the action, and then the player order comes back to the purple player and the green player. Once completed, slide the disc towards the third spot, and now the round is over. When the round is over, slide the discs back to their original position, keeping the first spot empty. Slide all the selected action tiles back to their original position, and the new round can begin. In a two-player game, players will select two action tiles during the round. When the develop action is selected, each player may buy one of the developments. In order to buy the development, you have to pay the number of credits depicted inside these diamonds. As a bonus, the player who selected this action has a one credit discount. You may also apply discounts from other tiles on your Empire mat, but the total price may never be lower than zero. So, first of all, choose a development that you want to buy. If the development is no longer available, obviously you cannot buy that development. Then place the development tile on your Empire mat and then pay the price minus any discounts you have. You pay with your credits and obviously if you don't have enough credits you may not buy such a development. When you place tiles on your Empire mat, do not cover these red spots. Players are not allowed to buy the same development that they already have on their player mats. If you would buy a tile and you don't have enough space on your Empire mat, you can freely rearrange other tiles so that the new one can fit in without covering the red spots. If you buy a tile and you have to cover those red spots, the game will end at the end of the round. Development tiles provide two benefits. First, they provide victory points depicted in these hexagons. Second, they give you special powers which are triggered during the faces depicted on those tiles. That means that you can use this power only when the settle phase is triggered, you may use this power during the development action, and this power during the explore action. When the explore action is selected, first draw 7 tiles from the bag. Place them with their grey side up, and then, starting with the player who selected this action, and then in the subsequent player order, each player picks one world of their choice. When you take the world, place it to the rightmost space of your Empire mat, still with the grey side up. These are explored worlds and all their powers are still inactive. However, these worlds can be colonized during the settle action. As a bonus, the player who selected this action can pick a second world after all players have picked their first world. Return all unpicked worlds back into the bag. Each player has a capacity of 9 worlds total, both colonized worlds and uncolonized explored worlds. So if you would take another world and your capacity is already full, you may decide which of the explored but uncolonized worlds you will keep. The worlds that you wish to discard are returned back into the bag. When the settle action is selected. First of all, the player who selected the action takes one colonist as a bonus and places it on their player mat. Then all players have two options. They either take two colonists from the supply, or they may colonize or settle one world. You have to do one of those two actions, you cannot simply pass. If you decide to take two colonists, simply take them from the supply and place them on your player mat. 
If you decide to settle the world, you may settle or colonize one of your explored worlds. First, you must have the number of colonists depicted on the world tile. In this case, it's only one colonist. You may even use the colonist, which you take as a bonus from this settle action. Then you either have to pay your credits for the world, or you have to have enough military power to conquer military worlds. There are two types of worlds in a New Frontiers game. Non-military worlds have this black number, and you need to pay that number of credits from your supply. Military worlds have this red number, and for those you don't pay the price in credits, you need to have sufficient military power on your empire mat. If you have the colonies, not just the home colony, but other colonies, or development tiles that have this settle power with the red circle and a red plus number, these powers give you the military power to conquer military worlds. In this case, these two powers together give you plus three military power. In order to colonize this military world, your military power, total combined power, has to be equal or higher than this defense number on the military world. You may never combine military power with the credits. So, if you have enough colonists and enough credits or military power, take the world, flip it to the other side, and now it's colonized world. Place your colonist onto that world, and if the world has this colored halo around that number, place also a trade good of the corresponding color onto that world. As you can see, you place colonized world from the left side of your player mat and explored worlds from the right side. If later in the game you have eight or more colonies, including your home colony in your empire, or simply if you place a colony behind this symbol, the game will end after this round. Similarly, if there are four or fewer colonists left in the supply at the end of the round, the game will end. Similar to development tiles, world provide victory points in these hexagons and special powers which you can use during these actions depicted on those tiles. When you take the produce action, you may produce goods on production colonies that have no goods on them. Production colonies are colonies that have this circle filled with the color that corresponds to the color of one of the four kinds of goods. Military or non-military worlds with this gray color are not production colonies. Worlds that have this colored halo around the circle are called windfold worlds. These are not production colonies. So, when the produce action is selected, you may place a good token on each production colony that has no good token on it. This production colony already has a good token there, so you are not allowed to place another one. Each colony can only have one good token. Windfall colonies do not produce goods. However, as a bonus, player who selected this action may place one good token on a windfall world which has no good token on it. Production action tile is the only tile which, if not selected during the round, one credit is added to this tile. The player who selects this tile later in the game, in addition to producing one good token on a windfall world, will also collect all the bonus credits on this tile and place it into their credit supply. When the trade action is selected, first of all, the player who selected the action collects one victory point as a bonus and places it on their empire mat. Then each player may sell one good token for credits and other good tokens for victory points. You may only trade or consume good tokens that you have on your colonies. First, you may sell one good token for the prices depicted on this action tile. If you do, take the good token and return it to the general supply and take the corresponding amount of credits. Then you must use these consume powers to consume all the remaining goods on your colonies. These powers with this trade and consume symbol 
allow you to consume these goods for victory points and credits. Each power can only be used once during the turn. You can use those powers in any order you want and you don't have to spend this good token only on this colony. Because this power allows you to consume one good token of any color for one victory point, but this power allows you to consume one good token of any color for one victory point and one credit, you can simply decide to consume this good token to this consume power. You can mark it like this. Because this power only allows you to consume brown good, it's obvious to consume this brown good token for this power. And now with the last good token, you can decide whether you consume it for two credits or for one victory point. As this player may have enough credits, he may decide to use this power and consume this good token for another victory point. So it's one, two and three victory points, which you take from the general supply and place on your empire mat and you get one and two credits, which you also add to your credit supply. Then all the goods tokens are discarded to the general supply and your turn is over. As you can see, if you have enough consume powers on your colonies, you have to use all your goods tokens. It may happen that you will have more goods tokens than you have consume powers. There are only two consume powers here and four goods tokens. First, you may, but you don't have to, sell one of those good tokens. And then you decide which good tokens you will use for those two consume powers. Those two tokens will be discarded and remaining tokens are basically staying on their colonies. If the initial supply of victory point chips runs out, take all the remaining chips from the box because all players will have to get all their victory points which they are entitled to. And then at the end of the round, the game will be over. When a player selects the retreat into isolation action, he simply receives two credits and that turn is over. There is no action for remaining players. If the player selects the send diplomatic envoys action, he will gain the top priority and in addition, one victory point token. Gaining the top priority means that the player's disc will slide to the front position of the priority track, moving everyone else back one spot. The new player order is effective immediately, which means if the next player would choose another action, he would do that action first, then the purple player and then the green player. At the end of the round, if the produce action tile was not selected, place one credit on that action tile. Then slide all other action tiles back up and move all the discs one position backwards. The new round can begin starting with the first player. The game can end in four different ways. If one of the players would cover one of these two red development spaces, or if he would have eight or more colonies, including his home colony. Or if the supply of victory point chips runs out. Or if there are only four or fewer colonists left in a colonist supply. Finish the round completely and then the game will be over. Before calculating your final score, remove all the explored worlds which were not colonized. Then sum up the victory points from these white hexagons from all your colonies, including the home colony, and all your development tiles. Some of the tiles may have a question mark instead of the number in the white hexagon. These tiles provide variable number of victory points depending on the conditions depicted on that tile. For example, this tile provides two victory points for any terraforming development and one victory point for any other development, including this one. This player has two terraforming developments, so that means two times two victory points is four, and he has one, two, three, four other developments. 
So that's eight points in total. Then add the victory points that you have accumulated from these victory point chips. And if you play with goals, add victory points from goal tiles as well. Whoever has the highest total score is the winner. If you play with the goals, first flip the retreat into isolation action tile to the other side. Each player will receive one of these stockpile mats and then shuffle all the goal tiles and put them under the chart Galactic Goals action tile. If a player would select this action, first he would get plus one priority, which means he would move one position forward on the priority track and then he gets one credit. In addition, he will draw three goal tiles. He would secretly look at those tiles, keep one of them face down and return the other two under the action tile in any order he wants. If he or any other player would have any other goal face down, that goal is flipped face up. So at any time during the play, only one goal tile can be face down. There are three stockpiling goal tiles in the game. If the action listed on this stockpile goal is selected, so in this case it's the produce action, any player, not just the one who has this goal tile, but any player may stockpile items on their stockpile mat. The items stockpiled on the mat may not be removed until the end of the game. The maximum number of items you can store on a stockpile mat is determined by the stockpile goals. So in this case you can store maximum six goods. When the action is selected and the player still has a corresponding stockpile goal face down, he may choose to put it face up so that he and all other players may stockpile items. At the end of the game, if any player has a goal tile face down, he needs to flip it face up. Now, in addition to their regular score, all players now score all goal tiles. Not just the ones they have next to their player board, but they all score all goal tiles. And that's how you play New Frontiers. If you have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. If you like the show, please subscribe. My name is Branislav Berec. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell. See you next time.